The first step is setting the goal to align ourselves to become more anti-fragile or resilient enough to undergo metamorphosis in the face of adversity. Intentionally moving in that direction is the first step toward alignment. With any luck, this will act as a wake-up call. The second component, attentiveness, is what allows awakening to take place. We need to concentrate harder. In fact, if you tune into your goal for it to serve to awaken, that intention will be accurate by the very nature of what you're wanting. Seek your complete focus and concentration. Therefore, we focus even more intently. One of the attention's primary properties is making direct contact with the actuality of what is here. This aspect of attention was touched on briefly during the guided meditation. It's as if you've allowed yourself to make contact with the emotion if you share the stress of a parent who was experiencing the stressor or wounded and angry themselves. That's the first step in paying attention wisely, tuning into the reality of the present moment. Moreover, Another aspect of presence is allowing what already exists to exist without interference. Something like feeling the freedom to simply be in the open air. A sense of letting go, breathing out, sensing the space, the kindness, and possibly the love that genuinely holds what is here is also present. I find that relating this exercise to the act of taking a deep breath helps me maintain a connection to the here and now while also perceiving the space around me, which is an important skill to have. When I say the word anti-fragile, I'd use physical activity as an illustration since, in order to grow muscle, you have to put it under strain. You have to break things down a little bit to build them back up again. The idea behind this dismantling is that you need time to rebuild if stress is tearing you apart. And you need to give them time to heal afterward. This causes them to grow in power. Even the mind and emotions are not exempt from this rule. We need the room, the stillness, and the vulnerability to let that then integrate a new, more free way. This requires a disentangling and opening from the habitual patterning and a willingness to actually contact, allowing the ground to be opened up in our being. A Christian teacher and mystic named Anthony de Mello once said, Enlightenment is absolute participation with the inevitable. Complete surrender to the unavoidable. So, the unavoidable occurs and our focus makes contact with it, thereby allowing it to happen, we are working together perfectly. I'll offer you a real-life example of someone who exemplified the potential of this delicate process of letting oneself be transformed from mud into a lotus flower. This is a narrative I told with complete and utter acceptance. Moreover, I find new motivation every time I go back to it. So. I just wanted to let you know that a man went on a retreat with his wife since he was in the latter stages of Alzheimer's. She needed to be there to ensure he went to the right room at the right time, ate properly, and so on. 
Also, he had been meditating for the past 15 years, was a licensed psychologist, and was a licensed therapist. And I met with him, as we have at these retreats, where we meet to work on how practices are progressing. I met with them, and at the end, he was very upbeat and kind of cognizant of what was going on in his head. This is why I said, ha, huh, so what gives here? What is it about this that makes you feel so buoyant? I don't think anything's wrong, was his initial reaction. He said, it's not wrong, the leaves are falling, and it feels like fall. It's only temporary. That really left an impression on me. That's where the idea that this is how things have always been done comes from. Then he told a story about when he was requested to deliver a talk years before, and, upon arriving at the venue with his audience of roughly a hundred, completely lost his train of thought. That's right, not only did he not know what he was going to say, but he also had no idea where he was or why he was there. What he did then is as follows. He stopped to take a breath first. He was completely inactive. He paused for effect to emphasize the need to break the cycle. He didn't go into a stress reaction or perform the double action since he didn't have a second arrow, instead, he took a moment to reflect and give words to the things he was observing. The recognition and contact section is the part of our brain that does the remembering and making of plans. Standing there with his palms together, he first said, confused, before bending his head and adding, anxious, heart beating, and embarrassed. He continued on like this for a time until finally saying, starting to relax. It took him a while, but he finally apologized. Another group member added, you know no one has ever given us the teaching this way. What, exactly, had he done? I could see that actual stress was present now. And he had hesitated before reacting, adding presence. What he performed with the two wings was akin to space creation since he named the phenomena at work in the bowing. In a way, it's a badge of honor, and this is the life that one must live. Remember that stress multiplied by presence equals evolution, therefore, always be present and always cooperate with what is unavoidable. So, what transpired throughout that time period? Instead of being the egoic self, who was caught in something strange and frightening, there was a change. By recognizing and giving thanks for what already existed, a door opened and he felt himself expanding. Though the uncertainty and pressure may still have been present, his sense of self was broad enough to encompass them. Due to his evolutionary depiction of an adapted response to stress, he was able to shift from an egocentric identity to the truth of our being, a delicate, present awareness. There are always going to be things that cause us tension. When we finally accept something and say, oh, okay, 
This is the rationale for rousing oneself. Please, I pray that this aids in enlightenment. This man's desire compels us to pause and pay closer attention. Thank you.